Hey guys, Simon here from Wild Earth and today we are talking sleep systems. A good night's sleep in the backcountry can really make or break a trip. The more rested you feel, the more kilometers you're gonna be able to put in. And your sleep system has a huge effect on how comfortable you are, how warm you are, and how rested you feel the next day. And don't forget, not only is this gear what you'll be sleeping on, you're also gonna be carrying it with you throughout the day. Now, there are several things to consider when buying a sleep system from how you sleep, do you move, are you stationary, to the conditions you'll be sleeping in. Like how cold will it be? Your sleeping pad is one of your main sources of comfort while sleeping in the backcountry. It keeps you off the ground and also keeps you insulated from it. But before you buy a pad, consider how you sleep. Are you a static sleeper? Do you roll around? Do you sleep on your back or do you sleep on your side? How warm do you normally get when you sleep? And will you be sharing a tent? Sleeping pads tend to come in a couple of different sizes and most companies offer a regular and a wide and a long. The long being for people over six foot tall. If you're a back sleeper like myself, you'll probably find you won't have any issues with the regular width. However, if you sleep on your side or roll around a lot, you might find the wider width to be a better buy. However, keep in mind what tent you're sleeping in. You might find that two extra wide mats might not fit in a small two-man backcountry tent. Most pads will come with an R rating or an R value. This is a rating of how well the sleeping pad insulates you from the ground below. So the higher the number, the more insulation. And in general, the more insulation inside the pad means that it will be heavier and bulkier when packed down. So I find an R value of around three to four to be a good compromise and a middle ground between how small and packable it is and how warm it keeps you. However, that might differ for you just depending on how warm you sleep. A couple of things not to overlook when buying a sleeping pad is the material it's made out of, the valve type, and also the inflation sack. Now most sleeping pads are made out of a nylon and that will be rated in denier. The higher the number, the tougher the fabric. Therefore, if the bottom of it's going on something rough, it's worth having a bit of a tougher fabric, but it will overall be a heavier sleeping pad. You'll find that rating in kind of 10, 20, up to about 70 denier in most pads. It can also affect how noisy it is to sleep on. And again, if you're someone that rolls around a lot, you might want to test that out and just make sure it's not too crinkly. You're not going to be waking up everyone else in your tent. Valve type. Now these kind of differ a little bit between brands, but there are some really good ones out there and it will make a real difference in how easy it is to inflate and deflate your sleeping pad. For example, on the Nemo Tensor here, it's a two layer valve. So this one here just plugs in to stop it. We pull it out to use the inflation sack and I can pull it out entirely and it leaves a really big opening to deflate the sack really quickly. An inflation sack might be something you haven't thought about, but it does make a huge difference when inflating your sleeping pad. A lot of sleeping pads nowadays will come with an inflation sack included, but if not, you can normally buy them separately. They attach to the valve of the mat, simply clipping in, and these have a couple of purposes. One is stops too much of your moist breath going inside the sleeping pad, and therefore stops it molding from the inside and makes it last longer. And also it turns one of your breaths into about 10. So for example, this pad, I can blow up with about four breaths. If you're trying to compare inflation sacks, look for one with a narrow opening on the top. This just helps trap the air a lot more and is a lot more efficient. Again, with a sleeping bag, you will be balancing warmth, pack down size and weight along with price. And again, the way you sleep may affect the type of bag that you buy. Tapered mummy bags tend to be a little bit more efficient, a fraction lighter and pack down a fraction smaller because they're using less material. However, they do favor a static sleeper. So if you move around a lot at night, it might be worth even considering something like a down duvet. Although these don't tend to be as warm because they don't trap as much air, it does give you lots of room to move around at night. And also they tend to pack down quite a bit smaller. And as with sleeping pads, you will find sleeping bags come in lots of different sizes. You'll find wider versions as well as longer versions for people normally over about six feet. A lot of companies also offer a woman's version of a bag, which comes with a slightly different shape. Now, most sleeping bags come with a temperature rating. Normally a comfort, a lower limit and an extreme. Now in general, if you're a woman or a colder sleeper, keep an eye on the comfort temperature. But if you're a man or you sleep a bit warmer, 
Keep an eye on the lower limit and you should be fine in that. Down bags tend to be smaller and more efficient than say synthetic alternatives, which might be cheaper, but also bulkier and heavier. And then within a sleeping bag as well, you will find a rating for the loft. The quality is kind of dictated by normally kind of numbers like 600, 650, up to 850 and above. The higher that number, the more efficient the down. So the less of it you'll have to use to stay at a certain warmth level. This means your bag will be more packable and more lightweight while still keeping you warm. In fact, this year I've just upgraded to this, the Spark 3, which is an 850 loft bag. And I upgraded from an old 600 loft bag. And now this bag packs down to half the size and is half the weight while still being suitable for a minus eight lower limit. And in my opinion, that is invaluable. It saves space in my pack and takes weight off my back. So I really think it is worth paying that bit extra to get a higher loft bag that packs down smaller. Now it might be worth also considering a sleeping bag liner. And sleeping bag liners come in lots of different materials like fleece, merino wool, or even silk. And they will add extra warmth to your bag. Essentially adding an extra layer into the bag will help trap air and insulate you and keep you warmer. That then gives you the option of just owning one sleeping bag at one temperature rating, and then bringing a liner along if you are going somewhere colder, just to increase the warmth rating a little bit. They also have the advantage of being much more easily washable than your sleeping bag. A pillow is often seen as a bit of a luxury whilst in the backcountry, but considering how little they weigh and the extra comfort that it can give you, they definitely are a worthy investment. Now, if you don't have a pillow, Alternatively, you can take your very expensive $400 down jacket and stuff it into your sleeping bag stuff sack. And then you end up with the world's most expensive pillow. If that doesn't take your fancy, you can always grab yourself an inflatable pillow like this one from Sea to Summit. It weighs barely anything and is incredibly packable and offers great support. You'll also find other pillows that have a down top or foam cores. These of course aren't as packable, but are more comfortable and feel more like your pillow from home. So it might be a worthy trade-off to take up a bit of space, but have a better night's sleep. I find the best thing to do with whatever pillow you choose is to use the hood of your sleeping bag to keep it in place and stop it slipping away in the middle of the night. If you take a little bit of time to really dial in your backcountry sleeping setup, making it as warm, as comfortable and as lightweight as possible, I promise you, you will really feel the benefits when out on the trail. But as always, if you have any further questions, feel free to pop into a Wild Earth store or give the customer service guys a call. In store, they are more than happy for you to get out some sleeping pads and a sleeping bag, jump on in and maybe even have a little nap.